In this video, I'm going to tell you what I think about the Consumer Reports Hearing Aid Buying Guide. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Consumer Reports is a nonprofit organization that has been around since the 1930s. They really focus on providing unbiased information about certain products and services. And they've actually done uh, Consumer Reports a couple times on hearing aids in the hearing aid industry. So I wanted to go over and provide my commentary on the Consumer Reports Hearing Aid Buying Guide. All right, so here's the Consumer Reports Hearing Aid Buying Guide webpage, which I'll also have linked in the description. They first talk a bit about the prevalence of hearing loss in the United States, which is staggering with 48 million out of about 350 million people who have some form of hearing loss. They then go on to discuss the causes of hearing loss, but more specifically the three types of hearing loss, which include sensory neural, which is the most common form of hearing loss, to conductive hearing loss, and ultimately mixed hearing loss, which is a combination of the two. But let's get into what you came here for, which is Consumer Reports' perspective on hearing aids. They take some time to discuss hearing aids and how they work, essentially amplifying sounds to make them more audible and clear to the user. One thing they lightly touch base on is the difference between digital hearing aids and analog hearing aids. They indicate that analog hearing aids can be more user-friendly, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. In reality, digital hearing aids, even though they have more advanced features, are more easy to manipulate because they automatically adjust to a wearer's needs without the necessity of manual controls. If anything, digital hearing aids are less provider friendly because there are so many more adjustments for a hearing care provider to make, but from a hearing aid wearer perspective, they are much more easy to use. They also discuss the importance of identifying the correct hearing aid for your specific needs. There are many hearing aids out there and finding the right one can make the difference between you hearing your best and not hearing your best. Even with the same brand, there are several different technology levels and styles that can make the selection process very difficult. The types or styles of hearing aids in the buying guide are a little confusing. Being an audiologist, I can't imagine that another audiologist wrote this section because the styles and the names of their styles are not typical of the actual hearing industry. They discuss several styles, starting with the mini behind-the-ear hearing aid, otherwise known as MBTE. This would more commonly be considered receiver in the ear, otherwise known as RITE or RIT, or receiver in the canal, otherwise known as RIC or RIC technology. In addition to the confusing name of this category, they indicate the inability of this style to significantly amplify, especially in the low frequencies. This is often not the case. There are RITE and RIC hearing aids that use power receivers that can generate enough power to treat even severe cases of hearing loss. Low frequency amplification depends on the venting of the ear mold, so it isn't necessarily a limitation of the hearing aid style, it's a limitation imposed by not using an appropriate ear tip or ear mold. They then discuss the traditional behind the ear hearing aids, otherwise known as BTEs. These typically use a tube with a custom ear mold, although they can be converted to use just a slim tube depending on the severity of your hearing loss. They can be the most powerful hearing aids out there and are suitable for severe to profound hearing losses. However, they once again incorrectly imply that they can cause a plugged up sensation inside of your ear. This is not a style issue. This is either an issue caused by a poor ear mold impression, incorrect venting of the ear mold, or improper 3D printing of an ear mold by the lab. If done correctly, you should not have a plugged up sensation while using an ear mold. Moving on to in the ear styles, they start with the completely in the canal hearing aid, otherwise known as the CIC style. These fit entirely inside of your ear canal. They are correct when they indicate that it accommodates milder cases of hearing loss and it's more susceptible to moisture and wax buildup. However, they are getting more powerful for moderate to moderately severe cases of hearing loss and becoming more resistant to moisture. They then discuss the in the canal hearing aid. 
But instead of calling it an ITC, they call it an IIC, which actually stands for Invisible Ink Canal Hearing Aid. These are two completely different styles. An ITC is pictured, however an IIC is an extremely small device that is even smaller than the CIC device that I previously discussed. Based on the description, I do believe they are talking about an IIC hearing aid, except that I've never actually seen an IIC hearing aid with directional microphones. There is just no room for them. They are also extremely comfortable when molded and manufactured properly. So if you do have comfort issues with an IIC, it is because the impression wasn't taken well, or the lab didn't create a good device based on the ear mold impression. And finally, we have the traditional in-the-ear hearing aid, otherwise known as ITE. These are the most visible style of hearing aids, but they are also the easiest to manipulate for individuals with poor finger dexterity. You can get them in half shell or full shell versions. The picture that you see here is a full shell hearing aid. A half shell hearing aid is about half the size of it. Now on to the discussion of hearing aid features. There are a ton of hearing aid features, including all of the ones that they have listed here. Some of these features are pretty standard and some are optional and must be selected based on your individual needs. Starting with multiple program settings, the Consumer Reports survey indicate that having multiple memories was the number one most important feature to hearing aid wearers. However, this is a pretty standard feature that all hearing aids have, and most hearing aids will switch into the most ideal program automatically, so you don't even have to push a push button anymore. The telecoil is an optional feature inside of a hearing aid. It allows the user to tap into audio from a telecoil-enabled phone, or even a hearing loop inside of a theater, church, or convention center. It can become a complete game changer when it comes to hearing better on the phone or in a public venue. You just have to ensure that you get a big enough hearing aid to house that telecoil. Directional microphones are one of the best features to help you hear better in a background noise situation, and except for the invisible in-canal style of hearing aids, almost all hearing aids have two microphones that provide this directionality. This is how hearing aids that go behind your ears don't just pick up sound from behind you, because the speech in front of you is picked up by the front hearing aid microphone, while the noise from behind you hits the rear microphone first, which tells the hearing aid not to amplify it. Both feedback suppression and digital noise reduction are pretty standard features in nearly every name brand hearing aid. They are extremely important features that are often lacking in devices that are purchased from online hearing aid retailers and cheaper hearing aids. In addition, feedback suppression doesn't work its best unless a feedback test is performed in a hearing clinic, which is not possible with hearing aids purchased elsewhere. They finally discuss Bluetooth features and remote microphones in the other features section, which are arguably some of the most beneficial optional features that are largely underutilized that can provide extreme amounts of benefit no matter what your age. Next, on to discuss how to select a hearing aid provider. Consumer Reports recommends seeing a doctor of audiology, otherwise known as an audiologist or AUD, to determine if your hearing loss has a medical cause which requires seeing a physician before being fit with hearing aids. Audiologists will assess your hearing difficulty to determine your specific hearing aid requirements. Audiologists can work in a variety of different settings from wholesale clubs to private practice audiology clinics. They go on to explain that not everyone who dispenses hearing aids is a doctor of audiology. There are also hearing instrument specialists, otherwise known as HIS, who can dispense and fit hearing aids. Consumer Reports recommends asking if the professional you'll be working with is an audiologist or a an hearing instrument specialist. While they can both fit hearing aids, there is a significant difference in their training. Audiologists earn a doctoral degree and receive well over a thousand hours of clinical training before becoming licensed whereas requirements for hearing instrument specialists can vary widely. Some states require no formal training or licensure, while others may simply have to pass an exam. In other states, hearing instrument specialists must receive two years of supervision before becoming licensed to practice. I will say that despite the disparity in training and education requirements, you can find some outstanding hearing instrument specialists who are well-educated and follow best practices. When working with a hearing care provider, Consumer Reports indicates a number of things that you should consider from convenient office hours to requiring that your provider verify that your hearing aids are programmed correctly. After all, hearing care providers exist to provide you with excellent service and to ensure that your hearing aids are always performing at their optimal level. Then we go on to the shopping tips section where Consumer Reports makes recommendations on how to save money on hearing aids. 
Some are good recommendations, some are not so good in my opinion. Checking out your insurance coverage is a good tip. Even though Medicare doesn't cover hearing aids at all, it doesn't mean that some private insurances don't. Have your provider check your coverage to see if you have any hearing aid benefits. In regards to Medicare Advantage plans that they discuss, they are typically the worst form of hearing aid coverage. The coverage that you receive inside of a Medicare Advantage plan often goes through a third-party company, which will give you a hearing aid discount, but oftentimes the discount will be the same price as if you were to privately pay for hearing aids out of pocket, and you'll likely get better service by paying out of pocket. You should always get a written contract that states what services and warranty you get for the money that you're paying. There should also be some kind of return policy just in case you do not perceive benefit with hearing aids. In the unlikely event that your hearing aids weren't programmed properly, you'll want to return those devices for a refund and try another clinic. It is always a smart decision to only buy what you need. However, performing tests in a clinic to determine which level of technology you need is an outdated way to determine which hearing aids and features are right for you. The level of technology should be determined by either an experienced hearing care provider who has spent time understanding your specific areas of need or by trialing devices in the real world to determine which level of technology you should go with. Now, I'm not a big fan of the next two recommendations, by asking for a price break or looking for bargains, you're setting yourself up for failure before you begin. While I do believe that you shouldn't look to overspend on hearing aids, going out with the intention of finding the best bargain will likely lead you to an unscrupulous hearing aid dealer who is just trying to sell you something without ensuring that you're receiving the right devices for your specific needs. Not to mention a lackluster fitting and follow-up care with those devices. Now, if you're truly strapped for cash, there are organizations like the Starkey Here Now organization and the Lions Club. If you fall below a specific income threshold, you may qualify for free hearing aids. All right, now on to discuss what you should expect when you receive your new hearing aids. And this is the most important thing that is in this Consumer Reports hearing aid buying guide, and that is asking your hearing aid provider to perform real ear measurement. Real ear measurement is the only way to ensure that your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. Now, if you wanna learn more about real ear measurement, I highly recommend that you watch my video that I will link in the top right-hand corner of the video and in the description below. In addition to real ear testing, they also correctly indicate that your provider should ensure that your devices are physically comfortable and show you how to use them. This includes placing them in your ears and showing you how to perform general maintenance. You should also have several follow-up visits pre-scheduled to ensure that you're performing well with your hearing aids. The last thing that the Consumer Reports Hearing Aid Buying Guide discusses is personal sound amplification products, otherwise known as PSAPs. These are amplification devices that are for individuals who are either not mentally or financially ready to treat their hearing loss to the full extent of a hearing aid. It is important to understand that PSAPs are not hearing aids. They can provide some benefit for mild hearing losses, but be careful because some of these cheaper PSAPs can actually cause you to hear worse, especially in background noise, which is where most people have hearing difficulty in, and they can even cause damage to your hearing if they overamplify sounds too much. There are also other assistive listening devices that can help you, such as amplified alarm clocks, telephones, and doorbells. There are even apps that can amplify sound directly into your earbuds. You just have to spend time figuring out which ones are right for you. Overall, there were some things that I didn't quite agree with inside of the Consumer Reports Hearing Aid Buying Guide, but in general, I think they did a good job of providing basic level information about hearing aids and hearing treatment. I hope that my review was beneficial to you. If you are new to hearing aids, I highly recommend that you continue to do research so you can find the right hearing aids and, more importantly, the right hearing care provider for you. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.